Welcome along to another big match build-up show and after a South Coast stalemate last week, a good point, a bad point, let me know how you feel about that. But Saints return to St. Mary's this weekend in search of only our second home win in 11 months. Well, on paper, this looks like the best chance we've got against the Newcastle side who are currently bottom of the Premier League with two points and without a win. Now, of course, we all know nothing is as easy as that. So on this week's show, I speak to John from the Saints FC podcast and I ask him, when does it change from a very important game to a must-win game? We're really clutching at straws if we think, you know, if we, if we don't get a big result and a big performance against Newcastle, then it is, it is alarm bells. Maybe not must win in terms of the season as a whole, but it's probably must win for a few key personnel, Mark Hughes included. And I know we're downbeat as Saints fans at the moment, but we've only got it half as bad as Newcastle at the moment. So I speak to the tune and find out how they feel heading to St. Mary's this weekend on the pitch and off the pitch. It's a case of Newcastle will start picking up points, but it's just a question of when and will it be too late. I am confident that we will stay up. I am very negative at the minute because that's the mood off-field and on-field isn't great up here. It's very toxic, very similar to when we last went down as well under McLaren. We just hope that Rafa stays and we get con- and he gets his contract and we'll get money spent, but these are all ifs. We've got Mike Ashley. I mean, we're happy to spot all us with you if you want. And as usual, this episode is now available to download in the card above my head if you're watching on YouTube or available on most audio platforms in the links below the show. Do leave us your thoughts heading into the weekend. Uh, Leave us your comments below, your predictions, or get in touch with us on the usual social means. But now it's time to kick off our preview show as Saints prepare to play Newcastle United. So welcome along to our preview part of the show and with another regular face this time this week. Uh, John is here from the Saints FC podcast on a on about a week holiday for you as well, isn't it, mate? Yeah, we're taking a taking a week off the podcast, although we also had a week off for the international break. So, yeah, two week holidays, pretty, pretty long stretch. Um, but next week on the podcast uh, should be quite interesting. So getting a, a professor from from the University of Southampton, uh, who happens to be a big Saints fan on, on the podcast. And he's got some pretty funny stories as well to tell. So uh, it's going to be interesting. He'll be a totally new guest and certainly the most qualified person, not necessarily to talk about Southampton, but, you know, just generally speaking. Um, yeah, getting a professor on the podcast, not something I ever really expected. Yeah, well, I'm sure we all, we all will look forward to it. And hopefully you can cover maybe a win, we can say, after this weekend. But... As as per usual, yeah, taking big deep breath. Uh, as per usual, we'll, we'll talk briefly about last weekend's action, though. A chance to speak about the point, uh, you could say, a valuable point, uh, a well executed plan at Bournemouth, uh, a clean sheet away from home, and you know, Bournemouth were uh, let's say under par. Yeah, I mean, Bournemouth have had a pretty fantastic season. I think a lot of Saints fans are probably looking quite jealously. Uh, across to our South Coast um, friends, neighbours, rivals, um, whatever whatever you want to call them. But I mean, what Eddie Howe has done there is just absolutely phenomenal. Um, and to be honest, I wasn't feeling confident going into the game. I expected we would lose. I mean, incredibly, Mark Hughes said that uh, the, the point, the nil-nil draw away to Bournemouth was a statement for Southampton. Um which, you know, yeah, okay, the game plan worked. We've got a point away from home from potentially tricky opponents. But that shouldn't really be a, a statement performance. A statement performance should be where we're going out and really solidly beating someone, where the game plan was perfect, where we come away with all three points. And for me, that's a little bit of an indication of how far we've fallen. And, um, you know, you don't really want your manager coming out saying we've made a statement after a draw. I mean, I think Pellegrino did something similar last season. I can't remember against who, but it was, again, it was a draw. And that was apparently a statement performance. But I mean, when I think of statement performance from Southampton, I think of like, you know, when we beat Arsenal 4-0 at home or, you know, when we turned around that that uh, 2-0 deficit against Liverpool and 1-3-2, or, you know, or even, you know, Claude Puel days, you know, the statement performance could be the the first leg of the uh, semi-final in the EFL Cup, you know, where we we beat Liverpool well. Okay, it was only one nil, but those those are statement performances, not nil nil draws away from home. So, 
I would have kind of been happy with it if he hadn't said that, if he'd come away and said, oh, yeah, it's a really important point for us. They're a good side. And, you know, next week, hopefully we'll see a statement performance and three points for Southampton. But, yeah, that, that does worry me a bit about kind of where where we're positioning ourselves and what we want to achieve. It, it doesn't seem right to me. There was a chap that I spoke to outside the ground, actually, said is that it's a sad situation that we've come away from Bournemouth actually celebrating a point um, which, you know, a game, you know, we could have said that we're going into the game as underdogs, but a point, he got a bit of stick on the day, actually. But, you know, I think it's probably fair to say that it is a stark realisation to see how far we have dropped in terms of our performances and our, and our standard, really. But I think two impressive performances, um, you know, one outstanding for me, really, Wes Wesley Hu, a great defensive display, and, and Hoiberg once again, just running the midfield. Yeah, I mean, Hoiberg has been a bit of a revelation this season. And um, it's great to see Wesley Hoop putting in a good performance and not, you know, fluffing his lines as he so often does. Um, I've got to admit, a couple of weeks ago when he dropped uh, Vestergaard and Kat Hooten, I thought that was quite a strange decision. Um, but obviously he's seeing something from Hoot in training that, that we're not seeing those of us that only get to, to see the actual games. If he can build up Hoot's confidence, make Hoot feel like he is you know, the centre of the Saints' defence, that's who we're going to build around, then hopefully he can step up. But... Um, yeah, he's definitely got it in his capability. It's just whether he's got the concentration to stay focused for a full 90 minutes, um, you know, week in, week out. I mean, he's, he's obviously shown that he could do it again. Um, Hoiberg, just fantastic. He should be the on-pitch captain, in, in, in my opinion. He's a leader that we've been looking for, and he leads with his performances as well as, you know, it seem, seeming like he's got the personality for the job as well. It's, it's, we're still it's kind of slight slim pickings though isn't it you know mm. how much better would it be to be saying oh you know wasn't Danny Ings marvellous with his brace that won us the game or like you know what a fantastic substitution to bring on Shane Long who created that goal or whatever but you know we, we've got to take the positives because there's not been that many so we should definitely focus on them but um it, it, it all depends really doesn't it you know if it's backed up with a big performance against Newcastle and a victory then then yeah, it, everything kind of looks fine. But I think we're going to find out an awful lot about Southampton on Saturday because it's a very, very, very important game. Absolutely. And we, I think it is a must-win game. But if we touch back upon the, the defence pairing as well, you know, Wesley Hoot seems to be the preferred of the uh, central defenders. And there was some selection questions, you know, asking about why Jack Stevens returned to the side. But the two of them together and Jack Stevens actually come out. It's refreshing to hear that, you know, the Newcastle game is huge for us, huge for the fans. Mm. We want to give them something to cheer for. Absolutely. Uh, Jack Stevens again, he's one of those players that you, you're just desperate for him to do really, really well. Um, and again, he's looked like he's made perhaps a little bit short of being a, you know, central defence, Premier League regular. But, you know, when he's been called on, he has put in some pretty big performances. You know, they're making all the right noises, but it's it's time to see it on the pitch and it's time to see some goals and it's time to see us not lose our heads if we get in the lead on Saturday, which you'd hope we, we should be able to do. And I know you love stats and, and XG and, and God knows what else, but there is a statistic that is, is a stark realisation that we are not taking our chances. I've read today that we are, I think, third or fourth in um, in the league in creating chances but not taking them I think it is only well we've only scored six goals this season and um, we're just not really putting our chances away we had two glorious chances at the Vitality at the weekend Armstrong from sort of six yards out and Gabby Dean on a last minute header failing to hit the target it's hard to really kind of know where to point the finger of blame because everybody's fluffing their lines like um you know, just thinking back to the Chelsea game as well, and had Danny Ings put in his chance in the first half, how different things could have been. It's time and time again. It points to the fact that we are doing some things right, but we're kind of a nearly team at the moment. We haven't got the full complement. Um, and that is, you know, it's worrying, it's frustrating, but it also perhaps indicates that it will only take a few kind of changes and tweaks to actually get things turned around and get us performing well. But you know, the problem is the Premier League is so competitive. We've tried to stay still in being kind of like the best of the rest. And in trying to stay still, as everyone else has improved, we're going pretty quickly in reverse. And mm. um, you almost need someone who's got that kind of like vision, uh, whether it's in the director's board, whether it's with the manager, but you know, that almost like bloody mindedness that we are going to do better. We are going to push for Europe. We are going to push for Champions League in five years because 
once you have that like narrative and belief behind the club that you're all working towards it, then I think people do up their game a bit. They think, oh, well, you know, if people believe it, then they, they think, well, maybe this is going to be a fantastic opportunity for my career. But I don't think anyone in the club believes that we're going to be the best of the rest anytime soon. And that's, that's quite a worrying indictment. And I wonder if that has an effect on, on the pitch as well with the players, you know, when they, I mean, how many of them read Ralph Kruger interviews in the Daily Echo? Probably mm. not many, but the whole attitude in the club, I feel, needs to be a bit more positive, and perhaps then that will have an effect on on the pitch as well. Because I don't know, we see on social media that the players are capable of banging them in. It's just when the pressure's on, they don't seem to be able to do it. And I, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I don't know whether it's the manager. Don't know whether it's higher than the manager. Don't know whether it's the trainers. Whether it's the players. But it, it seems like there's almost a bit of a deep-seated malaise across the whole club that they don't believe in themselves enough and, and that I don't know it's, it's a huge concern for everybody involved at the club at the moment but like you say it's a chance for us to believe that we can actually win a game this weekend Newcastle go into this game bottom of the league of only two points and Newcastle like you say are there one of the teams you know that, that could well be doing better they've got a great a good manager in Rafa Benitez but you know after 10 games if we don't win this game there's going to be serious questions to ask yeah, quite rightly so. I mean, I wouldn't be entirely surprised if Mark Hughes didn't survive a, a home loss to Newcastle, if that's what the outcome is. I seriously hope it doesn't come to that. But we're really clutching at straws if we think, you know, if, if we don't get a big result and a big performance against Newcastle, then it is it is alarm bells, you know. It's, you know, it's maybe not must win in terms of the season as a whole, but it's probably must win for a few key personnel, Mark Hughes included. Um, otherwise... It, it's hard to see how we can kind of continue to back him. He's had a fair old stretch at, at being manager. We haven't really seen much, much in the way of improvement. Okay, so the performances have probably been better than Pellegrino's had, had the players performing. And the approach to games has been more positive. But with the team changes that we're seeing every week, with the formation changes, with, you know, we, we all like to see a manager making substitutions and trying to affect the game. But it does also tell you that he still hasn't figured out what our best side is. And, you know, as a fan, I'm scratching my head as to even understand. It's, it's impossible to predict what formation we're going to go for and what personnel we're going to go for. You know, there's a few key players that we know are going to be there. Hoiberg's probably the only one who's got his name kind of inked down on the team sheet and perhaps Danny Ings as well. But, yeah, it's, it's a confusing time. It is, mate, it is. But look, we should go into this game actually thinking and believing that we can win a football game at home. You know, we've seen one home win in 11 months. Oh, so saddening, but a win. Oh, just a win. Even thinking about a win, it's just, you know, <laughs> it's it's extraordinary to, to think to go through nearly 12 months of only one home win. But if we do win, right, it, had, it, it sends us to the heady heights of 12th in the Premier League after 10 games. And, you know, on the flip side, Newcastle will find themselves in a crisis or should we not go away with that, with, not go away with a win, we could find ourselves in a crisis too. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in fact, the more we talk about it, the more it does seem like it is a must-win rather than just very, very important. But, yeah, I mean, I, I've got a question for you, Freddie. Like, when you go to the games... Is it kind of trepidation and anxiety that you go to go to the games, or are you just there really excited? Because you know, when you're a Saints fan, like for many many seasons, you can go to the games. You're always feeling like we've got something, we've got some chance, even if it is against a big club. You've got that belief that that we could do something. And I don't know about you, but I've lost that belief when I go to the games. You know that that excitement that you feel when you leave the house, you set off to catch the train. You go to your office to get the beers, you meet up with your mates. You know, there, there's like a real buzz and a real excitement about going to a game. And I've, I've lost it, Freddie. Mm. Do you still have it? I think I think you're right to a degree that we get we head into a St. Mary's anxious, actually, you know, just dreaming of a win, dreaming of some feel good factor. And it came once only 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 last last season. But oh God, it's a sad situation, isn't it, mate? But uh, uh, let's let's finish off with your prediction though. Can we finally see our, our win at St. Mary's this weekend? <laughs> oh mate, I just I, I I really don't want to predict what I think will actually happen. I'd love to predict a Saints win, but I think it's gonna be the same old story. I think we'll perform pretty well in the first half. Maybe we'll get a goal, 
Uh, maybe we'll get a goal in the second half. But I just don't have the belief in the team that they're able to hold on to a lead. You know, Newcastle, despite being bottom of the table, they still have good players. They can still do damage. They got two goals against Manchester United at Old Trafford, remember? OK, they're also lacking in belief. But it's one of those weird games where I think the kind of emotional side of things is going to have the biggest impact on the outcome. I think if Saints go in the lead and we concede a goal, we're going to end up with another frustrating home draw. Um, and that's probably me, my prediction. That's what I think the most likely outcome is. You know, I, I'll pray to Ligod that, uh, that that won't be the case and that we can actually get the home win that we all so desperately want to see. I mean, my God, the fans have paid, you know, hundreds upon hundreds of pounds following the Saints, you know, without a victory. It's, the, the people who are just going to the home games must be, you know, scratching their heads thinking, why on earth do I put myself through this? So, yeah, let, let's pray to the footballing gods that we have that victory on, on Saturday. I also hear you are, you've got a Japanese contingent, a, a mayor Yoshida fan club from Japanese TV uh, following you on Saturday, or at least with you and Tom this weekend. So, like, sadly, uh, I won't be. Um, I've got a birthday present to go and watch the six-day cycling in the velodrome. <laughs> but uh, Mr. Tom Parker, who uh, fans of the podcast will recognise his voice, they'll recognise his face if they watch it on your channel on The Ugly Inside on YouTube, Freddie. Tom's going to be heading down. He's going to be taking the Japanese contingent with him. They're going to be picking up a few Saints fans on the way. So um, if you do want to, to go along and meet the Japanese film crew um, and hopefully show them what being a Saints fan is all about, uh, get in contact, saintsfcpodcast at gmail.com. I'll put you in, in touch with uh, with them and Tom Parker. And hopefully we can show these guys a good time. Um, hopefully the atmosphere won't be really toxic and hopefully we'll, we'll get a win and it'll be a nice party atmosphere. Um, but yeah, Japanese people, if you've ever been to Japan, it's like a wonderful, wonderful country to go to. The people are so friendly and accommodating. So hopefully we can show them a really good time on Saturday um, and hopefully they'll enjoy going to, see, going to St. Mary's. Don't know whether they're going to see my Yoshida in the team though, which... A um, little bit of a shame for them. All right. Well, well, excellent stuff. Uh, and maybe we might catch up uh, um, with Tom somewhere along the way t- uh, on Saturday. But uh, thanks for joining me, jo- uh, John. All the best. Yeah, you're welcome, Freddie. Anytime. So do make sure you check out the next episode of the Saints FC podcast for the Professor on the show next week. And if you see Tom around the ground at the weekend, go ahead and say hi. You might get yourself featured on Japanese television. If you're watching in the Far East, let us know if we've been spotted. Send us a clip. Be interesting to find out. As for Newcastle, though, let us know your predictions in the comments or get in touch with us on the usual social pages. But I am hoping for something iconic to happen once again, immortalising this canvas behind me nearly 25 years ago, a certain Matthew Letizia scoring two wonderful goal of the month contenders against Newcastle that week. Uh, Let us know if you were there at the Dell that day 25 years ago. I was a little too young to remember. But this weekend... Uh, Be aware, town might also be a little busier than usual. It is the end of the half-term holiday, so there might be a few more children around town, so mind your language. And uh, there's also the German Beer Festival, October 1st, down at Mayflower Park. If you're going, do drink responsibly. And there are a few limited tickets available on their website if you want to get down there at the weekend. So now it's time to get on to the second half then with my conversation with Newcastle fans TV and usually Geordies, they're a cheery bunch but they've not had much to cheer about this season. You think we've got it bad down here? Well, we've only got it half as bad as what they've got it up at St. James's at the moment. So welcome along to our opposition part of the show. The, the chance we get to speak to our opposition. And this week I've got Lee from Newcastle Fans TV. And we're just saying off there just a moment ago, it's, it's a sad, sorry situation that we're already discussing, both of us, the fear of relegation. <laughs> I know, life of a fan, and it? it? seems to be, the, I was, I was just, we're just saying off camera there, it seems to be this uh, conversation that we'll have over and over Every time we saw, see the team up and do a video that we're talking about relegation, it's just a sad state of affair that these two wonderful clubs, have to, the fans have to go through the suffering every year and it's not on, is it? Yeah, it's not It's not fair at all. And, you know, perhaps taking a, a corner phrase from Alan Shearer from Match of the Day recently, copy and paste um, for what it is for, uh, you know, off the pitch antics, but we'll get to that in just a moment. But summarise it so far though, mate, it's nine games uh, played, two points currently Bottom of the league at the time of recording. How's it been? 
been a horrible. It's been, even pre-season, only won one game, so it has not been great. I think, um, of course, yes, you take the big five that were played, but realistically, the remaining four, we've only got two points, that's not good enough. We should be at least winning half of those games at least, so we should be sitting somewhere around about 14th to 15th. But to see Newcastle rock bottom in the Premier League is a little bit surprising. I didn't think that would happen. Um, coming in towards the back end of October, and it's like the odd doubt starting to creep up. I'm slightly fearful now. There's a couple of things. Is even if Rafa Benitez stays, does actually keep keep hiring him? Does he does he pull a trigger? Does he does he does he sack him? Does he do it now rather than the end of the season? Because you'll probably get less criticism now doing it now rather than at the end of the season. So there's a lot of things, and there's a smaller. A greater number of Newcastle fans start to come out of the woodwork now criticising Rafa Benitez. And there's a small minority. I have to stress that it's small. It's probably about 5 to 10% want Rafa Benitez out because of the start of the season. I'm not in that camp. I want Rafa to stay. The only thing I have a problem with Rafa is he can't influence a game. And what I mean by that is changing the formation. Even just, you know, what he seems to do is do a like-for-like -like substitution. Why not take a defender off? Why not change the whole system, go direct, you know? He just doesn't do it, and, it's, and it is alarming at the moment. But the next nine fixtures will play teams around us, so that gives us hope, but doesn't look good for any. You know, having said that, um, is that partly down to his the squad that is at his disposal or, or, or their lack of, or perhaps a lack of investment coming from upstairs? Probably a mixture of both. Rafa, Rafa is very, very stubborn. Um, he did change it last season when we were when we were struggling around about this time. He played, he, he had a play around with uh, two up top, didn't really work, and then went back to his four two three one. We've seen that the investment in January kickstarted our season and went on this amazing run. We finished tenth. January's still a long way off. You talk two and a half months. Can Newcastle still be in around? Because let's face it, we could be six seven points adrift in January. In even if Ashley was to chuck money at it, it might not be enough. So. It's a mixture of both, and I'm not very positive, unfortunately. And I would love to come on and be all, Newcastle are great and all this, but it's a sad state of affair that, you know, we could be in the championship next season. It's a really, it's a realistic term. The life and times of a football fan, and uh, I'm sure that the, the fans of top six clubs don't have a clue what they're going through. But, uh, you know, last last week, it was a, well, at the weekend, a one or loss at home. You know, uh, you've seen most of the possession in this game with all the shots, but is it a lack of cutting edge up top? Well, against Man United the game before, people are saying, bloody hell, Newcastle had 2-0 up, no, half-time at Old Trafford, but we blew it. So, tack and sense there, no. But this game against Brighton, where we got beat, that's the first time we've dominated for the whole 90 minutes. 26 shots. How are you coming away from that game not scoring? So, let's be honest, most of them were long distance, which haven't, be, haven't made the highlights. However, you cannot have 26 shots at home and not score. That's the worry. So, we need a striker. You can't rely on Hoss, though. I know Yoshino Rimutu looks bright, but Perez isn't the same player. I know he scored against his last year, didn't he? He's he's just... There's something not happening, and it's lack of down to creativity. If Shelby doesn't play well, Newcastle struggle big time. Kennedy's hit and miss, so January... We need January now rather than two and a half months. That's the concern. It, there's also a big concern that the two strikers that you let go in the summer are banging in goals for fun at the moment. Mitrovic at, uh, at Fulham, where he he was away on loan in the first instance, but scoring goals for Fulham. And Dwight Gale is scoring goals in the Championship. But, um, you know, we, we've already touched upon the discontent sort of upstairs. On, but you think that frustration, that frustration off the pitch is transferred to the pitch? Possibly. I mean, we protest every home game and plan is from what it looks like to try and get that into a home game the thing is Rafa doesn't want that he wants everybody in the stadium focusing on the football on the team now Mike Ashley's appeared in the last few games and the focus is now starting to switch to him if things aren't going well in the stadium so it gets a little bit toxic it didn't so much against Brighton because we dominated the game you, you thought that goal was going to come but if we were 2-0 down against Brighton that would have easily switched but I think what the fans want is a Sky Sports game and either get a banner in, boycott it, or do a walkout. They want something to hit Ashley. Although it's not great for the team, I'm not in favour of a boycott. I would do a walkout if it was planned. I would do that, but not a boycott because the team it will always be first, no matter who is at the helm. Unfortunately, there is life after Rafa. 
the team comes first. Absolutely. And, and speaking about the team and how are you shaping up? What's the formation going to be? Um, who's going to be the key player for, uh, for Saints to look out for on Saturday? It's going to be 4 2 3 one again, isn't it? He's not going to change it. You might change a couple of personnel perhaps, but I don't know. It depends. You'll obviously be looking at you, how you have been set up as well. Um, you know, it's always Shelby in it. If you stop Shelby, the thing is, Brighton allowed Shelby a lot. Shelby wasn't even touched. You know, if we create 26 chances against use lot, the law of averages would stay. We would end up scoring sooner rather than later. So it was getting Shelby on the ball. Kennedy is another one. Those two, for me, Yoshinori Muto, if he plays, has great movement. If he goes for Hoslo, it'll be a totally different system where Hoslo will be there just to hold the ball up to bring the midfield in if he goes for Hoslo. Hopefully he doesn't because we'll look better with Muto in the team. So I think... Yuzo will probably have a lot more possession, probably 60-40. I think the chances created, because both teams aren't great, it's probably going to be similar. 10 shots maximum, 15 maximum. And then, you know, in the final third, who takes the chances? Yeah, it's going to be, a, I think it's going to be a cagey game, a, a team, a, a game that both teams neither want to lose. And I remember it was a miserable day in, uh, was it March? March, yeah, it March time where you guys hammered us 3 0. And that was a final nail in the coffin for Pellegrino. And maybe I had a small part in that, but we'll have to see. But, um, some, in, in some respects though, I think you probably agree that you're relying on, on there to be three worst teams of you to stay up this season. Looks like. Because it, because of some aspects, you're thinking, "Oh, Newcastle will come good, will come good," which a lot of people are saying. But inside this bubble, we need this now because we can't keep having it, having, we can't dominate games and not win. We can't keep playing. We can't keep using the excuse of the big teams. We've played them now. Don't play the next big team's box today, so that's not an excuse. So I think there is Cardiff and Huddersfield looks like the other two, and. Like when it's a case of Newcastle will start picking up points it's just a question of when and will it be too late I am confident that we will stay up I am very negative at the minute because that's the mood off field and on field isn't great up here it's very toxic very similar to when we last went down as well under McLaren um, we just hope that you know Rafa stays and we get we can't, and he gets his contract and we get money spent but these are all ifs we've got Mike Ashley I mean, we're happy to swap all that's with you if you want. I'll mm. take a friend. Well, I think I think we look at Newcastle and say, yeah, they've got it worse than what and all the discontent that we've got at the moment. But you know, the next six games you might touch upon at the top of the show there. But it, it, the next six games, seven games as well, you're playing teams around me, and, and it could change the entire outlook of your survival. I mean, it's sad to say that at the, at the um, early stage of October. But how do you think? What's going? What do you think is going to happen on Saturday? Uh, let us know your prediction. I'd say we're winning, unfortunately. Um, I think if we take the first half of the Man United game and we boss the Brighton game even though we got beat if we take that into your game I think we'll get a score draw so I'm going to say 1-1 Well I think we need a home win but uh, before you go just tell everybody where we can find you Invite us at Newcastle Fans TV we've got um, Johnny down there they will be teaming up with Freddie as well after the game so I know my usual previews, reviews, uh, interviews with ex-players, etc. Et That's a pop over. All the best, Lee. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much, man. So that's it then for this week's show. Big thanks to John from the Saints FC podcast for filling in this week and Lee from Newcastle Fans TV. Do let us know how you think Saints will get on this weekend and it'd be nice to see some of you around the ground after the game for some match reaction. Hopefully there's three points to talk about after the 90 minutes, but until then, come on you saints.